All right, getting ready for star. Here we have TK A point seven A, which is about graphing quadratic functions and mainly identifying key features. This is one of the easiest readiness standards on the star, so we're thankful for it. Let's dig into question number one. Which graph best represents a quadratic function that has only one zero? Now I say this is the easiest uh, readiness standard uh, only if you know the vocabulary. You have to know, for example, that zero is another word for x-intercept. It's where a line crosses the x-axis when your y is equal to zero. Now, how many zeros, given that definition, does A have? It has two. So A is not the answer. We're looking for the one that has only one zero. B, how many zeros does B have? Well, it looks like it only has one. That's probably the answer. C has two. D, how many zeros does D have? None. No zeros. So the answer is B. All right, moving on. Graph of a quadratic function shown on the grid. Which coordinates best represent the vertex? Once again, easy if you know the vocabulary. Vertex is that point. What is the coordinate of that point? Over 1, down 2. X comma Y. X comma Y. 1, negative 2. Answer is J. You see how simple, quick, and easy these are if you know the vocabulary. Here it asks us for what the y-intercept, we have the y-axis, where does the quadratic function cross? It crosses at 0, 4. Which of those two, so since we're bubbling our answers in a griddable, which of these two, you can't bubble both of them, that would be a mistake, because on the griddable, You've got a whole bunch of columns, and then there's a decimal in each one. The first column is positive or negative. There's no comma, so you should not in any way do 0, 4 and put a decimal there. 0 0.4 is not the answer. You're going to pick, obviously, 4 as your answer. 0 would not be the answer to put in there for y-intercept, so the answer is 4. Number uh, 46 on the 2017 test. Which equation best represents the axis of symmetry? Axis of symmetry is the line that cuts it directly in half, where if you were to fold it across the line, they would mirror each other. So this would not be the axis of symmetry, because if you folded those arrows up, they'd go in this direction and it wouldn't match. Whereas if we draw the axis of symmetry here, fold it over, both lines lie on top of each other. So the equation that best represents that would be x is equal to 2, a vertical line, g. You see how fast these can go. What is the maximum value? Well, there's the maximum. This would be a minimum. So we have a maximum value. It tells us we're going to bubble it in in our Scantron. So some students say, okay, well, that's 2, 9. Well, how would I put 2, 9 into the griddable? Same as last time. We pick the maximum. The maximum is 9. 9 is the answer. Next, we are asked for zeros again. Once again, if you don't know that vocabulary term, you're not going to get the question right. Zeros are x-intercepts. Here there are two, so we can immediately eliminate A and C, and then we may not see exactly where they cross. We know they're decimals or fractions, but it's certainly not 2, 9. Those would not be the answer choices. The answer is D. You could also solve this by hand, foil it, and then solve and get your two zeros by doing that. We'll cover that in the video that deals with quadratic solving them. Uh, but you can pick your answer choice here by elimination. You could also graph it on your calculator since they gave you the equation and find the zeros using calculator method. What is a solution to r of x equals zero? Well, you know that r of x is the dependent variable y. y is equal to zero, so where is that line? That line is right here. That's just another way of asking, what are these zeros? What are the x-intercepts? 
there's two of them. We have 14 and we have negative 6. So where do we see the answer? And the answer choice is C. All right. Next, we have a question uh, without a graph. So on this situation, we've got to figure out what it will look like. Don't try and go just go by the words. You got to draw your own visual. So we have a graph. We would graph the points three comma two, one two three, one two over three up two, and then the other one is seven two, one two three four five six seven. Put a dot, and it tells us it is quadratic. There are two quadratic functions f and g. The graph of f opens downward. So this would be an example of opening downward. We'll call that F. And the graph of G opens upward. There would be G. Which of the following statements are true? The graphs of F and G have the same axis of symmetry. Well, if they're both going through that point, yes, they must have axis of symmetry. A is correct. I mean, I, Roman numeral I. The graphs of F and G have the same x-intercepts. Well... That is not true. They all cross at different places, so 2 is not a correct answer. 3, the graph of F has a maximum point. Here's F. It does have a maximum, and the graph of G has a minimum. Here's G. It does have a minimum. Roman numeral 3 is correct. And the graph of F is a result of a reflection across the x-axis. Well, that is not true. If we were to reflect that, fold it down, they would not match on each other. So the answer includes Roman numeral I and 3. 1 and 3. Answer is D. The graph models A, the area in square feet, we see that here, of the rectangular porch that has length and more. So it's talking about lengths on this side. Based on this, which width of the porch gives us the greatest area. What is the width in feet of the porch that gives the greatest area? Well, where is the greatest area? This right here would be the greatest area. It's not asking for the greatest area, but the width that gives us that greatest area right there. So that width is 25. The answer is H. All right, you can see, as long as you know your vocabulary, that's the key to doing well on these. You've got to be able to read a graph uh, and get your answers. Not very complicated.